But there's only one thing that separates the bad from the good. The good from the great. The greats from the legends. Just one thing. Obsession. It's a choice, not a gift. It's ruthless. Pain. Sacrifice. Obsession is unforgiving. It's in everyone. But it's not for everyone. Every athlete has the choice. Hunt or be hunted. It's only natural.
I was really, really nervous. I was on like two hours sleep. Nervous, scared, exciting. Just every single like worry and anxiety I probably could have had before the race. I remember thinking like, oh, I can't do this, I can't do this, this is too much. I couldn't really concentrate because I had been up all night kind of thinking about the times and the race and all the details. Once I started it, it just all of it kind of just fell away. Oh, this was just a huge mental game and all I had to do was just prepare and then go through the line. The experience was just absolutely amazing to just go on site race day and um, have people with jogging strollers, people that looked like they were in their 80s, people looked like they had no business even being there, and then there was me who probably looked like I had no business being there. Your, your mind's going to give out on you far more quickly than your body will. 
and just learn to push through, learn mental toughness, and that will really allow you to reach the potential that you have. He's a great American hero. You feel like you're just going to die, you can't make it that last quarter mile, and then you hear somebody call your name out, and I, you know, friends and family cheering you on the sidelines, you, you just... There's nothing, absolutely nothing like it. If you've signed up, then you've done the hardest part. So you've committed. Now that you've committed, all you have to do is just follow the proper training. If you have questions on training, you have tons of resources. So the nervousness is all in your head. And you already know you want to do it. That's why you signed up. So now all you have to do is just put on your gear, get ready, and go. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! 
We're Baltimore Watch Dogs staff here with Josh Stanza, the chairman and founder of the Baltimore Kings. I know that you and your staff put a lot of work into getting today's event orchestrated. Talk to me about how it finally felt to see the work pay off. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a lot of work that we put in over the past two years to get to where we're at now, and seeing the support here was unreal. It was great to see um, people from all over Maryland come together for this game. Uh, from the players, to the fans, to the, to the little kids that came here to watch all around. It was a great day. Uh, we ended up coming out here, getting the result, and also showcasing some of the top players around. So it was, you know, a lot of work went into it, but I think it's worth it, and I think this is only the beginning of what's to come in the future as well. You played in the game, and you played in front of all these spectators. How'd that make you feel? And from all of the support from them, what were you feeling as an athlete on the field? Yeah, no. Um, you know, I've retired from playing at a very high level um, not too many years ago, and uh, I'm a full-time math teacher. I teach at Annapolis Area Christian School, and I still train every once in a while and hang out and play with the guys at practice, and it's good to come out here and for them to come out here and watch me play as well. Um, I knew that if, I mean, I don't want to be the front and center of the show kind of guy, but at the same time want to make sure that uh, I'm offering some sort of positive influence in the community as well. So. Being able to step out here with some of the younger guys and just help them out in any way possible is what this is really all about. So. If I'm not mistaken, you scored the third goal in team history. You're the founder of this team. How does that make you feel? It feels good. It was a good cross. Um, I crashed the box. and It's funny because one of the reasons why I had to retire was due to my concussions. And then I tried not to head the ball at all today, and I ended up scoring a goal off of it. So um, It was a great ball in. All I had to really do was put some power behind it and beat the goalie. But, um, but no, it felt really good. It felt good to, to score in front of my daughter out here. She's running around somewhere over there in the corner. And, and being able for her to watch me play means a lot. So. You, had, you said you stepped away from soccer because of concussions and you scored again. But what were you personally feeling on the inside after you knew you put the point on the board? You know, like it, it's, it's been a lot of work to put this whole thing together. And I'm really happy that we've had the support from the local community. And that kind of, at that moment, it definitely culminated into this is a real thing. Looking over at the stands and seeing what we have, and people from all different local clubs working together here in the Baltimore soccer right. community. Even though a lot of times people try to work against each other, it seemed like everyone was here tonight in one big event that they really wanted to prove that we're here to stay. And this is an opportunity that we're presenting to uh, other local soccer players on the way up. So. What was the experience like playing for the Kings as an athlete? We know what you think of. Uh, when you're doing the front office stuff, but finally playing, what was that experience like? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. I mean, I do have a full-time job. Um, I do other things throughout the week. I coach soccer. I coach softball at Anapasari Christian. And then now being able to come out here and, and just continue to play and be around these guys is awesome. I mean, I have guys from out of town that came out here and actually staying in my apartment and living with me for the week in order to make sure that they're put on this stage as well. And, uh, it, it's, it's been a great experience, and I'm really happy that that we've been able to um, make all this happen. Uh, it's, it's nothing, it's not just me at all. I mean, 
standing right here, Mike Kozlowski. I mean, he's the president of the club, and, and he's done a great job um, just bringing us all in, bringing us together, running the youth program, uh, having people like EJ Jackson and, and people behind the scenes with our marketing crew that are constantly pushing our name and working together. It's, it's, it's great because for me, yes, I, I, I do try to stay behind the scenes for the most part, but having these guys that are constantly in the community helping build what we have makes my job a lot easier and allows me to be able to step on the field and do things like this. So um, it, it, was a, it, was a, it was a lot of fun playing out there tonight. A lot of your athletes, including yourself, have said there's a community feeling around the team. How does that make you feel about stuff off of the field and then the play on the field, that community feeling? No, it, it's, it's exactly what we're trying to aim for in the community. We want to make sure that this is one big focal point where people from the outside feel comfortable communicating with us and feel comfortable coming out here and creating an opportunity for them. Um, professional soccer in the United States, the landscape's constantly changing and we're trying to continue to push local players and put them on a platform where we don't want players to be here for a long extended period of time. We want to help move them on to the next level and putting them in a showcase game like this getting a bunch of fans out here, having different video crews out here, people like yourself as well helping covering the match is awesome and really goes a long way and really do appreciate your guys' support. What's next for the What's next for the Kings? Yeah, um, well after this game it's nice to finally have the first game. A lot of people that I've talked to, sponsors, different partnerships, um, they've always said what we've done is so great. We've done the U23s, the futsal, the youth, the women's team, um, but they said well, what about the pro team? And we haven't played a single game yet, so I haven't been able to show them anything. So now being able to have an actual product, show them video from the game, pictures, so that we are able to actually draw a crowd as well. Maybe that will make our club a little bit more marketable and help us kind of take things to the next level, find some investors and sponsors to really push this thing forward. I know there's groups in Baltimore that are trying to work together to help build Baltimore soccer. And for me, I'm all for it. I'll be the first one if there's a, a different league that starts up, USL, NASL, MLS, I'll be the first person to buy season tickets for it. I hope it would be um, involved with us. If not, that's perfectly fine. I'd still be a part of it. I'd still go out and support. I'd still send our guys out there to support as well because when's we the next all time, make this together. When's the next time we'll see your team on the field again? Um, most likely it will be in the spring of 2018. Um, we want to play a few games every year, two or three games. We wanted to close out 2017 after a long 20, or 2017 campaign with U23s and futsal. We went to regionals for futsal. We had women's throughout the summer and a youth season going on right now. I'm starting to get cold outside. A lot of fans don't want to come outside in the cold. But um, when we, uh, as we advance uh, and going forward, we want to make sure to eliminate anything going throughout the winter. There's a very successful club here that plays throughout the winter, an indoor club, the Baltimore Blast. We wouldn't want to interfere with anything they're doing. Um, they have, I mean, they're going to draw no matter what. But at the same time, when the, in the off season for them, maybe draw some of their players to come in, play a few games, or, or even just uh, uh, play in the opposite season to allow fans something more in, in the off season for them. So, I mean, we, we actually brought out this past year Dave Bascombe from the Baltimore Blast. He's an assistant coach at Baltimore Blast and also assisted our U23 women's team. And uh, having him around the guys and the girls was great. And uh, being able to maybe further build relationships with different teams in the community as well is what we're really looking to do. You have a huge Towson connection. You've got players from TU and then you've got uh, other local area connections. Is your next team going to be here in the Towson area and how do you plan on keeping that local Towson connection going? Of course, no, um, I, I love this area. Originally we were looking at different areas. I mean, two years ago when we first founded where we could actually make this team happen and be the most, uh, get the most people out to come support us. And one of the biggest places we looked at from the beginning was Towson. I mean, I, gra I went to uh, grad school at Towson, played a year there. We have a lot of players from the team that went to Towson as well. Um, a lot of local fans in the soccer community. You also see the Baltimore Blast are moving to Towson University to play out of the um, arena there. So that's always a plus to see other people moving this direction as well. Um, it's easily accessible from Anne Arundel County still, Howard County, Baltimore County, Hartford County. So I, I think this is definitely a good location for us. Um, we're definitely looking to expand though and look to other markets as well. I think having this market in Towson is great and building a relationship with Towson University, with Concordia Prep, everything that uh, Grasa is doing here and, and Dodo Neto who played for uh, the Baltimore Blast. He helped us make this connection and make this possible. Today. Anything you want to add? Um, uh, thank you guys for coming out. I really appreciate everything.
and I look forward to hearing more from you guys and more from you guys in the future. Thank you. Sports have evolved over the years. Back then, our helmets were leather. Not everyone was encouraged to play. We only drank what they gave us. Our socks were high and our shorts were short. Our masks were terrifying. We wore fur. We searched for an edge. Sometimes that meant stick'em. Other times, that meant voodoo. We went big, really big. It was business up front and party in the back. And we didn't have a nutrition plan. That was then. This is now. Athletes have evolved. We are today's athlete. We are focused. We push ourselves further. We're all players now. We have no offices. We demand better. And we're obsessed with what we put in our bodies. Sports have evolved. So has the sports drink. Upgrade your game. Upgrade to body armor.